With the Japanese tank tech tree consisting of 61 vehicles, Japan has one of the smallest tank tech trees in War Thunder, only behind Sweden at 57 and Israel at 32. But despite the low number of tanks, there are still many Japanese tanks that could be added to War Thunder, some of which we will be looking at today. The first of these tanks is the Type 4 Kinu, though I have also seen references to it being called the Type 3 Kiru. I will likely use the Type 4 Kinu name for now just because that is the one used by my sources and because the references for the Type 3 Kiru name are either without sources or are written in Japanese, with Google Translate giving unclear translations for these documents. The Type 4 Kinu was a variant of the Type 95 Hargo, with a Type 97 Chaiha turret, which came about as a result of the upgrades carried out to the Chaiha, where many of the Chaihas were rearmed with the 47mm gun in a new turret, leaving the 57mm armed turrets as surplus to requirements. At this point the Japanese had already tried and failed to upgrade the Type 95 Hargo to carry a 57mm gun, which had resulted in the Type 3 Kiri but this had failed due to the turret being too cramped. With the 57mm Chaiha turret now available, it was decided to make these to the Hargo's hull. Unlike the previous attempt, this worked out pretty well, as the turret was already a proven design with plenty of room for the gun crew. Thus, some of the Type 95s could now be rearmed with the 57mm gun, which was a massive improvement over the old 37mm gun. Due to the upgraded armament, these tanks were now designated as the Type 4 Kinu, or as I said earlier, possibly Type 3 Kiru. In game, the Kinu's new 57mm gun has a penetration of 19mm at 500m with APHE shells, or 55mm with heat shells. When compared to the previous 37mm guns, 27mm of penetration at 500m with APHE, it's clear that the 57mm gun is a fast improvement, with the heat shells having much better penetration characteristics, while the APHE shell, while technically inferior in penetration, would have a much bigger explosive content, meaning in the event that you do penetrate, you will cause massive amounts of damage. In addition to the main armament, the Kinu also has two machine guns, one in the back of the turret and one in the bow. Though interestingly, the Chaiha turret in War Thunder also has a third machine gun on the turret roof. Armour on the hull would be unchanged, with a maximum thickness of 12mm, while the turret armour would be the same as the Chaiha's, with a maximum thickness of 32mm on the mantlet and 25mm for the front and sides of the turret. This is still rather thin, but an improvement over the Type 95 which outside of the mantle only has around 12mm for its turret. Due to the new turret weighing more, the Kinu's max speed was reduced to 25mph or 40km an hour. Though I've also seen the lower figure of 22mph or 35km an hour mentioned as well. Now I would have thought the crew would have been increased, as the Chaiha's turret was capable of housing two crew members. But every source I've seen states that the crew is free, with a driver, bow machine gunner and commander in the turret man in the gun. The only reasons I can think for this discrepancy are either that people are just quoting the Type 95's usual crew complement, or what I personally think is more likely, while the turret theoretically could hold two people, due to their standing position and being mounted to the smaller hull, this has now been reduced to basically just one person being able to fit in the turret. So why should we have the Kinu in War Thunder? Well the big selling point is its upgraded main armament, which gives us a light tank with the hitting power of the Type 97 Chaiha. This could come after the Kami in the light tank line, possibly at very high tier 1 or very low tier 2, though its battle rating would be no higher than 1.3. By introducing it to War Thunder, we could ever so slightly bridge the gap between the Kami at 1.0 and the M24 Chaffee at 3.7, while giving players a light tank with a much better weapon and still retaining decent mobility. It would also allow players an opportunity to play and learn more about this little known tank. Another tank I would like to see added to War Thunder is the Type 97 Chinese, a tank that almost became the Imperial Japanese Army's main medium tank instead of the Type 97 Chaiha. By 1935, the Japanese Army's main tank, the Type 89, was starting to show its age and was unable to keep up with faster units of the army. Coupled with the news of the new A6 being developed in the UK, this spurred the army to start looking for a new medium tank to replace the Type 89. However, as the army was still on a peacetime budget, it was decided to look into two designs, one being the more capable but expensive Type 97 Chaiha, and the other being the less capable but cheaper Type 97 Chai Ni. 
The Chai Ni was armed with the same 57mm gun as the Chai Ha, with an in-game penetration of 19mm at 500m with APHE, or 55mm with heat shells. Interestingly, there is no coaxial machine gun, leaving only a bow machine gun for anti-infantry defence. I've seen some conflicting reports on the armour, with most stating it was to have a maximum thickness of 20mm, while some state that its maximum was 25mm. It would seem likely that the lower of these figures is correct, taking into account it was meant to be a cheaper tank, but it's possible that the design requirements changed as time went on, or it was found possible to have thicker armour for around the same cost and weight. It's also possible that the maximum armour only refers to a small part of the tank, such as the mantlet. Speed is where we see a big difference between the Chai Ni and the Chai Ha. As the Chai Ni is powered by a 135 horsepower diesel engine with a maximum speed of 17 miles per hour or 27 kilometers an hour. This is compared to the Chai Ha which has a 170 horsepower diesel engine, capable of reaching speeds of 24 miles per hour or 38 kilometers an hour. Crew complement is another area that the Chai Ni suffers in, as it only has a crew of 3 versus the Chai Ha's 4 with this crew consisting of a driver, bow machine gunner and commander. As there is only one crew member in the turret, this will no doubt slow down reloading and make the tank very vulnerable to losing its only crew member here in the event of a penetration of the turret. As things turned out, before a decision could be made on which tank to adopt, the Marco Polo bridge incident occurred, sparking the Second Sino-Japanese War. With the military budget subsequently increased, the decision was taken to adopt the more capable Chai Ha. So why add the Chai Ni? I think it would make a good low tier premium tank, giving players an opportunity to play a tank that, for a few events going differently, could have easily ended up as the Japanese army's main medium tank of World War II. Of course, the Chinese less capable than the Chai Ha in speed and crew members, but with regards to armament and armour, it should be able to hold its own well in the lower tiers. If added at a battle rating of 1.0 or 1.3, I think this would make a fine tank in War Thunder. One last vehicle I would like to see added to War Thunder is the Honey 2, a variant of the Honey 1, but armed with a Type 91 105mm howitzer instead of the Type 90 75mm gun. For the most part, this vehicle was the same as the Honey 1, with only a few minor modifications to fit the 105mm howitzer. The weapon had a traverse of 20 degrees both ways and an elevation of minus 5 to plus 20 degrees. Armour penetration when using the APHE shell was 2.8 inches or 71 millimetres at 500 yards or 457 metres versus the Honey 1's 75mm gun with 92mm of penetration at 500 metres. Armour would remain the same at a maximum of 25mm. Mobility would presumably be roughly the same as the Honey 1 with a max speed of around 25 miles per hour or 40 kilometers an hour, while crew complement is increased from 3 to 5, with a driver, gunner, commander and two loaders. This vehicle could be added just before the Honey 1, or alternatively folded with it, as it is a pretty similar vehicle, with the only major difference being the armament and crew complement. A better rating of 2.0 would be a good place for it, and it could function as an alternative to the Ho Ro or Ro Go, which are already in-game. So as we can see, we have some varied and unique vehicles that could be added to the Japanese tank tech tree. I personally would most like the Type 4 Kinu to be added, as it would give Japan a slightly more effective light tank in the lower tiers, which is an area where Japan doesn't really have any effective light tanks at the current moment. I would like to know which of these tanks you would like to be introduced to War Thunder, and are there any other Japanese tanks you think should be added? I look forward to reading your comments below. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did. I'm Toreno and I'll see you next time.